So, I haven't done one of these videos in a long time, but quite a few stories have compelled me to do this. First, I want to say RIP to the Ultimate Warrior, of course. It's still so weird that he was at the Hall of Fame, he was at WrestleMania, he was at Raw, and then the next day he drops dead. It's, it's something that just doesn't make a whole lot of sense to me, but... I love that Raw last night was a complete tribute to the warrior. He deserved it, and I guess if, if it had to happen, I'm glad that he was able to find peace and get closure and reconcile with WWE and just put all that behind them. Now, that brings me to my next topic. Fuck Nancy Grace. Fuck her. Now look, I saw the clips from her show and some people could say hey it's not entirely Nancy Grace's fault because you should blame her producers or her writers or the interns whoever is in charge of getting this information for her to go on the air yeah maybe ultimately they're the most to blame but this is her show her name is on the title she's the one presenting the facts out there to the public the fact that I mean, there's so many things I could make fun of. Her calling Ultimate Warrior Ultimate, like that's his first name, is just so stupid to me. Even if she's not, even if she's never seen wrestling at all, which obviously seems to be the case, how, what makes you think that Ultimate is his first name? Like, some common sense, lady. And for some reason, DDP is on the show, which is like, wow, way to try to bring credibility to her show by having an actual recognized wrestler on here. That just hurts even more. And then she proceeds to mention how many young wrestlers have died due to steroids or drug use. Therefore, claiming that there's a big rumor that this is how Warrior died, where it's like, wow, okay, this was the day after he died, and you're going on the air saying that this is probably the cause of his death? By now, we know that it was a heart disease that killed him. So how dumb do you feel now, Nancy Grace and company? It wasn't even steroids. I'm not saying that steroids didn't help and the years of abuse, I'm sure, took its toll, but ultimately that's not how he died. And the fact that you show a list of wrestlers that these are wrestlers who have supposedly died from drug use, and you have Owen Hart's name on the list. Wow. Like, again, even if you have never watched wrestling, if you're gonna do a story like this, at least know how somebody like Owen Hart died, that it was a freak accident. That's just an insult. And I know shows like hers, a lot of people who think they're above this type of stuff will look down upon wrestling or its fans and say how pathetic we are or how pathetic it is that we get into a quote, fake sport. That's a whole nother argument for a different day. I. You know, I don't even like saying that it's fake because predetermined and fake are two entirely different things. But yeah, just fuck Nancy Grace. Fuck that whole show. I shouldn't be too surprised because after the whole Benoit thing, she did something similar. Try to... S Anyways, I got a lot more mad about that than I probably should have. So, next subject... Victoria may be coming back. I was watching the Hall of Fame, and she was in the front row. And I read online that she may be getting a trainer position for NXT or FCW, whatever. And I think that'd be really cool to have her sort of back in the family. It's very cool to have these older wrestlers be in the company without having to work those crazy schedules or like they can still work there and give back to the younger talent and I've thought for years that that's who you need to train the younger talent is experienced successful wrestlers and even this could result in Victoria having a couple of TV matches with some of the younger girls. I'd love to see Victoria versus AJ, Victoria versus Paige, Victoria versus Natalia. 
those would be great matches. And again, the Divas division itself has been picked up a lot the last couple of weeks, thanks to Paige. Now, last thing, subject I want to mention, is congrats to Daniel Bryan and Brie Bella for getting married last Friday. Very cool. Um, and I'm glad that WWE gave Daniel Bryan some time off for his honeymoon because that guy is a, is a workhorse. He would be willing to work through his honeymoon. I wouldn't be surprised by that. But they gave him the time to, you know, to, to celebrate his marriage. And Brie Bella might be mean to say, but I do think she's the cuter of the Bella Twins if that means anything. Now really quick, I just want to mention how Raw last night, I love the Intercontinental title tournament, or the fact that it's for the number one contendership. That just further elevates that belt a lot more than it has been the last couple of years. Um, I don't know if it had something to do with the tribute to the Ultimate Warrior of like, hey, this was a big belt that he held, so let's try to bring some prestige to it. I think it helped a lot of the talent and the caliber that was in the tournament and the matches that they put on really makes this title look more important. Um, so I should probably also mention the fact that we're going to get Masked Kane back, <laughs> which is awesome. I can't tell you how excited I am for that. I wasn't really feeling this corporate Kane thing. I mean, maybe I never gave it a real chance, but honestly, WB never really gave it a chance. They they put him in a suit and tie and just had him out there, and he lost every single match he was in. It's like, what was the point of doing this to him? I know the big thing was because of the See No Evil sequel, you want to have people recognize that that is Kane without the mask, but still, I just, they need to have a better plan for this. They need to have Kane maybe even more in that authoritative figure. But, whatever, ultimately, it seems like they realized it wasn't really working. And that video package that they showed of Kane just being dominant, evil, it makes me want this mask Kane so much more. It looks like maybe him and Brian for the title. I'm down for that. Obviously, the big thing from Raw is the return of Evolution. Something that I thought I'd never see again. Evolution, Triple H, Batista, Randy Orton. I mean, these are guys who have fought each other so many times since Evolution broke up that it's just kind of still surprising that it's happened. But if it means to have a trio face shield in a big match scenario besides the Wyatts, then I'm all for this. Not only that, if they, hopefully, I have my doubts, but hopefully they put shield over. I would love that. I'd love to see S.H.I.E.L.D. beat these guys, these top-level guys, and just further cement S.H.I.E.L.D. as the top stable in the company. I think it'd be awesome. I, I like it in a lot of ways. So, guys, that's my thoughts on just some of the news going on right now in WWE. Let me know in the comments below what do you think of just some of this stuff. Thanks for watching. Like and subscribe. Later!